the difference in life expectancy between women in the United Kingdom and women in India is about 18 years. If you wanted to see a difference of 18 years in life expectancy and you were worried about your ecological footprint and didn't want to fly all the way to India, go to the London Borough of Westminster. Between the rich parts around the Palace of Westminster and the poorer parts around Harrow Road, there is an 18-year gap in life expectancy, right in one London borough. The difference in life expectancy between men in the United Kingdom and men in Somalia is 28 years. If you wanted to see a difference of 28 years in life expectancy, and you didn't fancy a trip to Somalia, catch the West Coast Main Line, assuming the government sorted it out, to Glasgow. The difference of life expectancy between men in Calton in Glasgow and men in Lindsay is 28 years in one Scottish city. So we have right here at home a magnitude of health inequalities that equals the magnitude of health inequalities between rich developed nations like this one and low income countries like India and Somalia, right here at home. The analysis suggests that we will not solve this through the healthcare system alone. And as was said a few moments ago, the thrust of my reports and indeed of my research is that we need to take action across the whole of society. To improve health of society, we need to improve society. And that means action across all the key domains of society. And I've been arguing this for many years, that my profession, medicine, doesn't have so much to do with the health of populations. My reward for this slightly eccentric view was to be made president of the British Medical Association. I suppose they thought if they had me on the inside, whatever you're supposed to do out rather than on the outside, whatever you do in. So while I was there, I thought, what about trying to engage the doctors on social determinants of health? And since leaving the BMA, my little Institute of Health Equity at UCL has had an initiative to engage all of the medical and health professions. And we've produced a report on what the medical and health professions can do. First, we need to put our own house in order. We need to make sure there's equitable access to care for all. Second, we need to be working in partnership across sectors. If you're worried about early child development, then the health professions need to be working with the other professions who are concerned with early child development. If you're worried at the other end of life about care for older people, it's not the job only of the health professions. We need to be working in partnership. And third, we need to be the advocates. Everybody cares about health. And if the way we organize our affairs in society is damaging people's health and increasing health inequalities, then we in the health professions need to be the advocates. And of course, education is a vital part of that. So I would like to say to the people graduating today in the health professions, welcome. Welcome to the moral cause of making society a fairer place in which everyone can enjoy the good health that's currently possible to the most privileged. Thank you.